And it was very liberating because, for two reasons maybe. Uh, the, the first reason was the music itself, because it was um, it it was music that gave us the opportunity to to mess around with, and um, uh, we uh, didn't take the, the the easy path. We tried to to dig into the music and find what what lies underneath and um, how this music could be transform into something else, something contemporary. Antonis, it's so lovely to meet you here on Zoom. Lovely to meet you, Petra. You are a violinist and yeah. yeah and you, you mentioned that you, you had a rehearsal in the orchestra. So in which orchestra do you play? Yes, I'm a violinist. My uh, my job is a concertmeister at the Thessaloniki State Symphony Orchestra, um, which is uh, one of the two main big orchestras in, in Greece. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was, it's a big, uh, it's a, it's a big symphony orchestra. Mm -hmm. And we have our Eastern concert tomorrow because our Orthodox Easter is a bit later than than yours. So we're oh, having okay. a, 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 an Easter concert. Okay, so how long have you been playing in the orchestra? I've been playing in this orchestra since 2004, so it's 19 years already. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and as a as a child, as a child, when you started uh, playing the violin, what at what age were you then? I was like something like four and a half or five, maybe. Mm -hmm. I was still in preschool. I didn't uh, go to uh, elementary school when I uh, started uh, having violin lessons. Uh, yeah, so it went on from there. And was it something that you wanted to do? Or was it something that your parents introduced to you? Uh, my parents introduced me really because my father is a flutist. Uh, oh, so okay. uh, it was, for me as a five-year-old, it was one of the things that you do, that your parents mm -hmm. suggest. Uh, later it became... Uh, uh, my own thing. I, I, I really decided I wanted to play music and be a musician, so uh, it became my life. But now your father played the flute. Why specifically did you play the violin and not also the flute? Uh, I, I think he didn't want uh, me to have the same instrument as he did. Oh, I see. Okay. So I want to have a... a um, for me to have uh, an ind independent way, uh, mm -hmm. so to say. And do you think, as uh, for a musician, the fact that your pair, that your father was a musician as well, did that help you? Could you? Did that motivate you in a sense? Yes. Um, well, you know, there are plenty of people that their parents are not musicians, and they manage. Yeah. Uh, Great, excellent. Uh, in my case, it was part of the family. It was part of growing up, part of uh, what you do. And uh, you you realize quite early that there is a, s a certain ethic to the job, uh, which includes uh, daily practicing and uh, discipline and patience. But the things that you don't necessarily um, find as a child um, in other activities. Mm -hmm. uh, I now see that with my students that uh, sometimes they they don't have the patience and the uh, the discipline to to practice uh, looking a um, couple of months ahead in the future. They yeah. they, uh, they expect to achieve things as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's good to 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 learn to be aware all the time that music is always uh, evolving, always developing, and um, so it's an ongoing process and um, it's something that you cannot really um, sort of give up. Uh, it's it's constantly part of your daily routine, your life, and so on. Well, it's. Um, I spoke to. I can't. I can't remember who the musician was, but he also said that because his parents were musicians, that you then see the path. You you see where you have to go or what you have to do 
to become the the musician. So this is also um, one of the benefits of seeing your parent and knowing, and they can sort of guide you also in that in that direction. Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, I'm I'm not sure my parents uh, were hundred percent certain that I was going to become a musician. I really? sort of had, had to convince them <laughs> <laughs> sometime uh, in my teenage years mm -hmm. um, because it is a hard job and it's a very uncertain job uh, unless you play in an orchestra, uh, which is not. Um, which is not always the case. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, you start because of of the love for, for the music, but uh, that's a different uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a different thing. And you really have to love it in order to get through all this uh, process. Yeah, because not everybody uh, ends up in the orchestra you know some some musicians don't play in an orchestra so uh is this something that you always wanted to do to be part of an orchestra um i wasn't sure i th i think um i realized i wanted to play in an orchestra in my student years uh but then it happened you know uh um i, I Got the, my first job in Athens quite young, so uh, it started before I really had a, the dilemma dilemma where where I should uh, focus on my work. So uh, I started and I loved it, and I've been doing that ever since. And you know, um, you know, you love something when you don't realize it's been nineteen years. Uh, I still feel as a freshman. I feel that uh, I'm. I still have to learn things. I, I, I'm discovering uh, new things every day. That's amazing that you can that you can feel that way because you've got a lot of pressure on you, I suppose, in in an orchestra like that. Yes, but um, that's the great thing about it uh, because if you have the pressure, then it motivates you to be more creative. Uh, it motivates you to um to be on uh, on the best of your abilities so i i think otherwise maybe it can get a bit boring if you don't feel this um uh the freshness of uh, responsibility yeah no that's that's true but um you know we got connected by maria uh, kostraki uh the singer and i'm so happy that she she uh, connected us um, and you were involved in her um the the CD or the recording that she did and and you did the arrangement and the production of it. So do you do many of these side projects? can we call it a side project because it's not part of of you in the orchestra? Yes, uh, it's a side project which actually is a big uh, part of my life. Uh, okay. it's not my my profession, but uh, it's something I really enjoy doing. Um, so yes, uh, I've been doing that for quite a while, and I absolutely uh, enjoyed working with Maria in this project. Uh, we both did. Uh, it was uh, a very liberating uh, CD, mm -hmm. and it was very liberating because, for two reasons, maybe uh, the the first reason was the music itself, because it was. Um, it it was music that gave us the opportunity to to mess around with, and um, uh, we uh, didn't take the, the the easy path. We tried to to dig into the music and find what what lies underneath and um, how this music could be transformed into something else, something contemporary, um, or or something uh, like world music, or or even taking uh, some Greek songs and translating them into uh, maybe uh, uh, an, uh, an aria or something. So uh, uh, this was the, the first thing that was liberating. The other thing was was uh, COVID and uh, the quarantine, and it was 
it was a time when everything stopped for everybody. So there was no orchestra, no rehearsals, no schools, no, no nothing. Uh, and it was uh, refreshing to have uh, an artistic goal and good friends that are also good musicians to, to play with every day. So that was great. Well, that's wonderful that you used the time because it seems, and, and with many people that I talk to, this was a time where people really um, experimented and really uh, did things that they otherwise didn't have time for. So do you think it's also for you was this this specific time that, that was so important? Yeah, you know, uh, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> I think that that's what's happened with many of uh, us. Many many artists uh, have gone through the same uh, thing. Uh, many creative people. I mean, you cannot stop being creative if uh, exactly. even if you want. It. And uh, many people got the opportunity to do something different. Uh, I mean, we, we would have done the CD anyway, but uh, it would have been a very different thing. Uh, maybe it could have been bigger, bigger string ensemble, or maybe more winds, or maybe more brass, I don't know. But uh, we were forced to, to use a, a core of musicians, a small ensemble. And um, we, got co we got connected in a different way than... Um, uh, let's say a regular CD production would require us to. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm one of the many musicians that uh, had the chance to experiment uh, during that period because there was no no, no outside pressure yeah. to deliver anything. And it was a perfect uh, opportunity for us to, to see what happens. I mean, to do something and see what happens with, with it. I love that, and I've I've been uh, watching also the videos about with the music on YouTube that you have, um, and I find it so creative, so beautifully done, so really um, wonderful work. And and how important was it for you to put the visuals uh, with it, because it uh, seemed to fit so perfectly. Yeah, um, for once we were very lucky to have uh, two very close uh, people that uh, are uh, cinematographers and directors. So the one, the first video was done by Petros Kostrakis, who is, who is Maria's brother, mm -hmm. who directed it. And the second one was made by uh, Yanis Gutman, who is a, a good friend of photographer here in Thessaloniki. So they were people that connected to us uh, before we started shooting and they knew us and they knew the music and a, a lot of love was put in there uh, because it was um, a personal relationship before before uh, we started the, the video. Um, I don't know if um, it is necessary to have a video of a song or of a musical piece because music is uh, in itself uh, an independent art uh, and I do most of my listening uh, when I'm not looking at the screen yeah uh, and I think that's the that's still the best way to listen to music mm -hmm. um, but this is the era we live in uh, we live in the time of YouTube and it's fun I uh, this is sort of my guilty pleasure to to be able to enjoy uh, a music video, yeah. I uh, I appreciate this process of putting images into music, mm -hmm. uh, and you, you try to um, you try to imagine how uh, a music could uh, look like, and there are so many ways to do it, uh, and I'm always. Um, uh, very surprised and very stunned when it when it happens. Then mm -hmm. uh, suddenly it becomes part of the song, so part of your let's say of the mythology of the project. Yeah, the, the, the video. So, so it's it's a little uh, little fun that uh, we both appreciate it and enjoy it. Well, well, I agree with you. The music in itself is just beautiful, 
Um, but I I do love those videos. They they really um, they really very very well done and and very beautifully done and very fitting for me, you know, and uh, sort of complements the music definitely. Yes, um, if the video is good, then sometimes it can almost uh, enlighten some parts of the music. Yeah. But, um, and we were very lucky in both cases that we had that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that we uh, we achieved this goal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So maybe we come up with more in the future. No. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, no, definitely. Mm -hmm. But now you and Maria, did you know each other? You say, well, you talk about everybody knowing each other and that it's that it was that type yes. of collaboration. But have you worked before together? Yes, we work, worked together a couple of times, uh, but in our, let's say, in our uh, main uh, professional activities, uh, she sang with the orchestra a couple of times as a soloist in classical repertoire. And it was only after a couple of concerts that we realized that we both loved song, the the, the form of song. And um, uh, uh, then we started to exchange ideas and songs. And a couple of years later, she wanted to to make this uh, this project with her personal uh, CD. And then she thought of me and uh, we started working on this together. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful that you can, and and especially you can see also that that you understand each other. I mean, this whole collaboration just feels good, feels right. But, but, you know what I do um, as an arranger. Um, I like to think that there's a twist always, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, this little twist is part of it's part of me and part of what I do, and. Um, I, uh, if you arrange something for somebody uh, for their project, then you have to convince them. I I had to do a lot of convincing uh, uh, to Maria, and I'm very uh, grateful that she went along with it. Uh, she, uh, she gave me trust that was uh, one hundred percent, and. Uh, so uh, whatever crazy idea I might have, uh, she went with it. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm still grateful for that. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, she must have a lot of faith in you. Yeah. Hmm. So now you say that this is something, uh, although it's a side, it's it's a big part of what you do. So uh, do you see more projects like this um, coming up? Uh, there are projects like that coming up, uh, not always um, as in the form of recordings, but uh, there are projects uh, right now um, that I'm working on that uh, that are for smaller ensembles or for big orchestras um, that are happening um, uh, in the next few weeks or, or even months. So. There are three or four projects that uh, that are, that are uh, on the way. Yes. Mm -hmm. And do you work internationally? Do you work with international um, musicians as well, or are you just focused on working in in Greece? Uh, sometimes yes. Um, uh, right now, I'm working on some arrangement for Avia Vital in Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, and thank God now now that you can work uh, as an arranger from anywhere, so it doesn't matter if you if you live in in Germany or not. Uh, sometimes I have uh, gigs in the UK as an arranger, um, mainly in Greece, um, but um, it, you know it doesn't really matter uh, where yeah. uh, where everybody is. Mm. You can record in uh, in different countries and. Uh, mm. Uh, it uh, it's still um, uh, it's still the same creative process. Yeah. Well, it's it seems to me, and and in the time that I've done these interviews, that you are all really connected in 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 some way or the other. You are connected with each other, or the musicians. You know, everybody knows about each other. So it must be wonderful to yeah. <laughs> to collaborate also when you. 
when yeah, you know it, these people. It, it's it's true in a way uh, when you meet somebody from somewhere. Uh, it's very likely that you know already somebody from that town uh, and yeah. that place. And uh, it was um, a, a great uh, line, even from our student years, that you you met a new person, a new musician, and there was always somebody that he had in common. Mm -hmm. uh, so that makes a, a great little community uh, mm -hmm. the musicians. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, yeah. so uh, uh, it's also huge. So it's a a community that has so many countries and so many different personalities and so many different styles of music um, that it's absolutely fascinating to be a part of. Um, and uh, although you sometimes you, uh, let's say you play with a guitar player or a singer or conductor or whatever that may be or a violinist, um, I'm always um, very intrigued by the fact that everybody has a, a very different and unique way of making music. So uh, that uh, yeah. uh, things are very fresh and alive all the time. Well, I I did a um, well part of this was a project that I did in lockdown where I photographed five hundred artists in their windows, and amongst them were you know many pianists and violinists and and um, and what really struck me was that everybody had their own although I didn't hear them play necessarily, I just met them as persons. Um, they all had this unique personality. I can I can 100% remember everybody and, and how we interacted. And I always believed that this was also how they made music or how they were playing, that, uh, you know, no artist is the same. So everybody brings their their personality to the talent and to the to the music. Yeah, you know, uh, this is the famous uh, Monty Python quote, we are all individuals. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, but, uh, it's true, you know, every person is, uh, is an individual, but mm -hmm. artists have, um, have learned from very young age to, to connect themselves with their inner world of their feelings and their personalities. Mm -hmm. And it's not that we live a different life than everybody else, is that our approach to life and feelings might be different. Uh, we all have the same ex life experience, but artists um, are trained uh, to be very near uh, to their emotions and their, their personality. Amazing. Yeah, that's true. That's amazing. But now, um, Antonis, um, this is just the CD that we talk about again. Uh, I just want to mention that this is called um, Mosaic. Mosaic. Yes. Yeah. And you have on this CD different languages? Yes, we have, um, we have Italian, we have Greek, we have mm -hmm. French, uh, we have Spanish. Yeah, that's, I think that's about it. Yeah. Yes. And is yeah. this way why you you called it Mosaico because it's because of all these different um, songs and languages yes. and um you know um the the first thing was the, the where the music came from uh, it was uh con countries that um uh, are linked uh within the Mediterranean Sea and then it was the arrangement that uh, sometimes I used um instrument from the Middle East or from Africa, percussion from Africa. So even if these countries are not represented uh, uh, um, from composers, they're still represented from the soundscape, from the from the instrumentation. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it was very challenging to have, uh, let's say, a French song from the 19th century or a Greek song, a contemporary Greek song or a Spanish um renaissance song or uh you know uh, italian baroque and somehow make it sound like it was written in the same area in the same period it was part of my goal and i deeply believe that uh you know people are the same uh in all ages and all, all civilizations and uh, you know 
and what 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 changes is the the wrapping up of uh, our you know personality and uh, we try to find what's you know what what lies underneath uh, all all, uh, all all the musical styles that we know um it's in a way it, it's part of wearing uh, of, of the fashion like wearing a cloth and then changing for another one um and it's fascinating to see that uh, uh a french composer 200 years later than an italian or a spanish composer they speak about the same things more or less and they mm. um and they are very much alike they are different but the 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 core is the the, the human experience is the same and how did you uh, did you have this knowledge? I mean, do you are you interested in the in these historical aspects of the music or the cultural aspects of the music? Well, to be honest, I'm um, I'm not a, um, I, I'm not approaching uh, the arrangements from a historic point of view. Okay. Um, there's a little bit of research. Research uh, uh, once you have the material, once you have the the music, then uh, you learn some information about it. But then I try not to be influenced by what other people have okay. done. Uh, in fact, um, once I uh, uh, I notated the, the music down and I uh, got all the uh, chord chart and uh, all the, the, the lyrics and the, the melody. Then I deliberately didn't listen to any recordings for 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 a while until I had my own version ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's um, it's it's tempting to 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 copy what other people have done, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do that. But now, uh, tell me what what is the wish for you for the CD for this recording? What what would you like um, to see happen? Um, uh, we want to play more. Um, what happened is that um, out of these sessions, um, an ensemble uh, was born, a music ensemble oh, was okay. born, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and so it became like a, uh, the Mediterranean Ensemble was uh, not only the name of the project, but also the name of the, the people that were involved. Uh, so we want to play live. Um, and we are very good friends anyway. And our immediate plans involve uh, concerts in Greece and, and abroad. And maybe we will start recording again sometimes in autumn um, to see what happens uh, then if we uh, take some new materials and see if we, if we can uh, find uh, new ideas and, and things. Well, I would love to see this in concert. I think I love this music. It's I'm, I'm putting it on my playlist now, my Spotify playlist, because I, I really nice. love it. Yeah, I love the variety of it. I love the different languages. It's it's really beautiful. And of course, Maria has got a beautiful voice. Um, yeah, this is it's it's amazing. Yeah. You know, there was something I wanted to uh, say about Maria's voice. Um, mm -hmm. What? It's very rare is that we have a, a wonderful soprano, a mm -hmm. classical soprano, uh, but uh, she's able to to change her performance, her way of approaching the, the song, and uh, she can make it sound like a non-classical soprano, a non-classical singer. Uh, so that connects more to the human level, to the, um, you know, the, there's the, this um, distinction between uh, classical singing and uh, folk song or, or, or let's say pop song, yeah. uh, what whatever popular song means. And I, in my mind, uh, the popular song uh, aims directly to the heart. There's, there's uh, nothing intellectual about it. 
uh, of course, classical interpretation can also uh, aim for the heart, but there's also this knowledge involved and this technique involved. Um, so there are many, many layers. But uh, the popular song aims directly to the um, the feelings. And Maria can do this. She can uh, transform her voice. And even the, even the Baroque songs, she didn't sing uh, like she was a classical soprano. She, she sang them uh, in a very refreshing way. And that's what, what makes this uh, CD sound different and um, also unifies uh, the different eras and the different musical right. styles. Yeah. This, this way of approaching the, the, the performance. Absolutely, I can I understand exactly what you mean, and and yes, it's it's um, maybe this is why it really um, spoke to me. You know, I really when I heard the music, and it was it was so beautiful, and and um, yeah, so I, I understand now what the what the whole approach of it is. But um, thank you so much for your time um, and. Congratulations to you and Maria for this amazing and all the musicians that were involved for this music, uh, beautiful recording. And please let me know when you come to Vienna because I would love to see this in concert. Thank you so much, Petra, for having me and in, uh, mm -hmm. on behalf of everybody involved in this uh, project. Thank you for having us. Okay, it's a great pleasure. And send my regards to Maria as well. Absolutely, I will. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Antonis. Right. Bye.